we are in the process of aligning, doing the first stage of the aligning on our Halicrafters S38B and I've got my uh, trusty HP 8640B signal generator set up I've got it set 455 kilocycles I've kind of got a jury rig cable coming through here um, that goes through a 0.01 microfarad capacitor that hooks to the front stator on the S38B then I have my uh, trusty uh, Heathkit VTVM connected to the output of the speaker and you can hear it's generating a signal what I've done is on these IF cans I start with the top of this one and the bottom one I adjust it for the uh, highest output and then I come to this one and adjust for the high output uh, made quite a bit oh and then also you set this on band one at 100 megacycles and you adjust that for the highest output which we've done we've got a pretty good signal now so next we go on through and uh, um, we're uh, doing alignment on each one of the bands. We uh, completed the alignment on the radio, except for the BFO. Um, the alignment instructions in the manual say to use an RMA dummy antenna, which is a 200 uh, mmf uh, cap, a 20 microhenry uh, coil, and a 400 uh, mmf cap, and then a 400 ohm resistor. I've had this set up for a while. I use it, uh, have used it several times. I've just got it on a breadboard. Basically, when we did it, we uh, connected the uh, um, signal generator to one end. The other, the other end went to the antenna. I know on some of the radio boards, there's a lot of discussion on whether this is necessary or not. Uh, probably isn't, but I went ahead and did that, um, and then. Uh, essentially following the alignment instructions here in the manual you inject a signal into it and uh, you go ahead and adjust those antenna trimmer caps uh, that one down there this one up here these three down here or four down there and then these three um, you usually there's two of them for each band um, so we went ahead and ran the alignment on that. Uh, everything came out pretty close, or as close as we could get it to go. I did have to replace the one screw that was rusty. I pulled it out of a donor machine for right now. Um, that's on the on the fourth band, and it was really really touchy. Um, and that screw was kind of the head on it was kind of stripped out, so I went ahead and replaced it with a different one, so it was easier to adjust. And uh, anyway. Um, I got received signals on all the bands. Uh, on the on the fourth band, I was able to get WWV on on 15 megahertz for a little bit, not for very long. So uh, the alignment uh, we got the alignment finished up. Now we're going to go ahead and mount the chassis back into the uh, into the uh, um, case and put the decals on, and then we will. Uh, then the last thing, well, we got to make a knob, and then the last thing we need to do is uh, we're going to make a different BFO. One other thing I wanted to point out is on on uh, band one, which is the broadcast band, you do two adjustments. You set it 
15 your your uh, signal generator at uh, 15 uh, mega cycles and then you set the uh, dial at 1.5 or kilocycles and you dial at 1.5 mega cycles and you do that adjustment and then the manual I had good focus here the second step you're supposed to set it at 500 kilocycles and set your dial at 0.6 megacycles and adjust P that just doesn't make sense to me um, I couldn't get it to adjust that way so I went ahead and set the uh, uh, the RF generator at 600 kilocycles and then the dial at 600 kilocycles essentially or and adjusted it and everything seems to be work okay now if you look at the manual for and, and this is actually a manual for a 38C because this chassis kind of matches uh, the 38C more than the uh, 38B so I'm not so sure that previous owner didn't take a 38C and put it in a, in a 38B um, but the 38B manual say 600 kilocycles 0.6 megacycles and that's what we did we aligned it there and it seems to work okay I was pulling a station in on uh, 570 kilohertz and it was almost spot on so I'm assuming uh, manual misprint or something like that all right we're uh, starting to apply the decals that we got from radio days um, the way we're doing it is we're using this microset and microsol from the instructions we use the microset lay it down on it um, then soak the decal in water put it down on there get it positioned right and then after we get it positioned where we want it then we use the microsol paint it over there or apply it with a with a brush and then it's supposed to actually melt melt the decal into the uh, into the surrounding so it looks like it's been painted on so we'll let this dry and we'll see how it turns out I have my uh, new uh, new style BFO set up on the breadboard here um, It'll eventually look like this. There will be five components. There's a 4069 IC. There's a resistor that I don't, a one meg resistor I don't have in there. There's the crystal. Uh, it's not really a crystal, but there's the uh, um, the 455 kilohertz uh, generator there, and two 100 pf uh, capacitors. And as you can hear. On 20 meters, it actually works. Um, right now, I've just got it wrapped around the antenna wire that I've got going into it. And just to show you that it actually does make a difference, I'm going to shut it off. There it disappears. I turn it back on. So, it's working. Um, actually working quite well so I'll go ahead and finish putting it together um, on the perf board here they were mounted under uh, under the chassis and I'll hook it up to the uh, AMCW switch here and we're actually have a good working BFO um, before I before I do that I'll go ahead and uh, disconnect it and put it on the oscilloscope and show you that it's putting out a good solid uh, stable signal. This is the replacement video, uh, BFO uh, built on a breadboard. You can see there's quite a few wires. Um, I did, che uh, did check it out. Works good. So the next step was to move it over to a perf board so I can mount it in the radio which I have done. Um, this is the perf board. Obviously there's really only um, five components a lot less wires this is the first time I worked with this type of perf board made a lot of it made a lot of the connections just using solder bridges and everything uh, 
ended up working out really well. Thought I'd show you what it looks like, what the signal looks like on the oscilloscope. It's a really stable signal. Uh, nice, uh, especially compared to the gimmick capacitor on the original ones. So, next step will be to mount, actually mount it in the radio. Um, you notice for the output here, I use this really thick wire. I'll show you why when I mount it into the uh, into the radio itself. Now, I got the uh, design for this BFO off the internet. Um, and if you go to flashwebhost.com circuit BFO ceramic.php that's where I uh, got the information to build the actual circuit so um, I'll go ahead and have that URL on the uh, on the website you can see our first attempt at uh, applying decals didn't work so well so our second attempt um, came out a little bit better. We think we got the technique perfected a little bit more, so we're going to go ahead and uh, oh, let me see if I can get this focus. We're going to go ahead and uh, attempt to put the rest of them on. I'll show you the process that we used to do that. We're in the process of uh, putting the case back on. Before I did that, I wanted to. Uh, show you where I placed the new BFO. It's in the, right below the receive standby switch. Um, I've wrapped the wire around the incoming antenna wire. I tried to put it across uh, I believe it was pin pin 4 there but it uh, overdrove it so I just wrapped it around around the antenna wire that comes in. Seems to work okay. One of the other things we did to make it a little bit easier to take it in and out is we put these connectors on the speaker so that when you're removing the chassis from the uh, case you can just disconnect these and, and uh, remove the chassis and then remove the speaker. Here's some single sideband on 20 meters with the new BFO. 